Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is uh, always great to see all of your faces. Um, I just wanted to open up tonight by welcoming you all. Um, first, I want to give a um, major thank you to uh, Melanie Eisen and Bacheva Alice. Uh, Melanie, our Director of Teaching and Learning, Bacheva Alice, our Dean of Students in the Middle School, uh, who have uh, been doing a tremendous amount of planning uh, for all different types of scenarios for the fall. And we'll be sharing with you our, our virtual learning plan of Berman, Berman at Home 2.0 for tonight um, as we start our school year. I also wanted to thank all of our faculty and staff and administration that are on this call as well, who have taken basically all their summers uh, to really plan for an incredible return to school uh, in the fall and have done a tremendous amount of work. Um, you'll hear a little bit more about the work that our teachers have done uh, throughout the summer in their professional development and different seminars. Um, really a major Yashikov and a major thank you goes to the administration staff who have just really been working all through the summer to make sure that our students have a very productive beginning of the year. Um, before I hand it over to Melanie, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that uh, obviously there's uh, I, an evolving situation um, with, uh, you know, between our, our county and state officials uh, please know as an update that we are continuing to communicate with our county. Uh, we are also working with the JCRC, the Jewish Community uh, Relations Council, as well as the Association of Independent Schools of Greater Washington, the ISGW, who's representing independent schools. Um, you know, this is a very complex uh, situation and uh, we are working uh, with both county and state people to uh, make sure that, um, you know, the, the decisions we are making for, for our school are ones that will uh, consider all the health and safety measures for our students, for our families, for our faculty and staff, and for the greater community. And as soon as we have uh, more clarity uh, on those metrics and more information, we will share with you. But in the meantime, um, for tonight, we present you with uh, what, we, uh, what we believe is a very exciting Berman at Home 2.0 program led by our middle school team of Melanie Eyes and Bacheva Alice. So without further ado, Melanie. Thank you so much, Dr. Kostan. Um, my heart is beating a million miles a minute, and it doesn't help that all I can see is what you can see on the screen. And my heart is beating a million miles a minute because I am nervous to present to you tonight, not because I'm not sure of the amazing work our incredible staff has done, not because I'm not sure your children will come away more enriched and, and feeling more a part of a community, but because I know what you're sacrificing to send your kids to us. I am a day school product myself, grow, not, if you don't know me, I, I grew up in Montreal, so you, you're really taking a lot out of me by having me miss the Canadians game tonight. Um, but I will say that um, having grown up in a city with a great community, um, having watched my parents make sacrifices so my sister and I could go through day school, I know the trust that you're giving to us and we take it very seriously. Um, so I want to welcome you this evening. We are so happy to have you here and eager to welcome your children back to school. My name is Melanie Eisen and I am the Director of Teaching and Learning in the Middle School. Oops. I hope I don't have too many oopses. Before I start, I want to express my gratitude to this amazing middle school team that you see in front of you right now. Starting from the center is Eliana Soror, our guidance counselor. Moving clockwise is Mrs. Alana Pepper, our Judaic programming coordinator and amazing teacher. Below her is my family. Um, we're blessed with two boys, Ben, who's sitting in front of me, and Jason, who's standing next to me. Moving along is Mrs. Batsheva Atlas, the Dean of Students, and closing up our team, our lineup for this year is Ms. Angie Newsom, our Administrative Assistant. I want to take the time, though, to also thank all the other administrators in our amazing institution and, of course, our incredible teachers. They have been unbelievable this summer, and you will be amazed by what they have done to prepare for this year. Our commitment is steadfast. Our goals are the same as they have always been in the middle school. We will work with you, we will work with your children to ensure a wonderful year of learning and joy. All of us in the middle school are here for you, so never hesitate to reach out. You never know when I'm gonna be able to pick up the phone and call, so please don't hesitate to reach out. 
The other thing I'm going to ask you to do is I have a Vanna White tonight, which is so lucky for me, Sarah Sickerman. So she's going to be monitoring the chat. Please post any questions you might have. And Sarah has incredible knowledge. And I don't know if you've had the opportunity yet to see the amazing work she's done on our website. She will try to answer them in turn. And if she doesn't know the answers completely or wants to save them to the end so everyone can see them, she will ask me the questions at the end. Although I walk into this year with concern about the state of our country and the world, I also walk in with joy. In this week's Parsha, the word Simcha comes up seven times. Rabbi Sachs shares the following. The word Simcha is an unexpected word. The story of the Israelites thus far in the Torah has not been a joyous one. It has been marked by suffering on the one hand, rebellion and dissension on the other. Yet Moshe Rabbeinu makes it eminently clear that joy is what the life of faith in the land of promise is about. The seven references of Simcha refer to the temple and the Shalosh Regalim that will be celebrated there, celebrated as a people, as a nation, as a community. Rabbi Sachs continues, Simcha is usually translated as joy, rejoicing, gladness, happiness, pleasure, or delight. In fact, Simcha has a nuance untranslatable into English. Joy, happiness, pleasure, and the like are all states of mind, emotions, and they belong to the individual. We can feel them alone. Simcha, by contrast, is not a private emotion. It means happiness shared. It is a social state, a predicate of we and not I. There is no such thing as feeling simcha alone. Simcha is to share your happiness with others and in the midst of that collective national celebration, serve Hashem. Blessings are not measured by how much we own or earn or spend or possess, but how much we share. Simcha is the mark of a sacred society. It is a place of collective joy. I think about all the time we spent in our COVID bubbles. We have shared Samchas through Zoom. I think I went to two weddings this week, some in small groups in backyards, but not as a whole, not as a whole community. I ask and invite you to join me and the thing that even though it might be some time before we can all celebrate together, that together we use the words of Simcha as we prepare for school, as we prepare for the high holidays, and as we prepare for the coming year. Tonight, I'm going to share with you our plan for Berman at Home 2.0. I love that name. The decisions to be, will, should the decision be made to return to campus, we will have another meetup to address that plan. But for tonight, we're going to stick with the plan at hand. I also want to draw your attention to the other quote, not the Torah quote on the screen in front of you. I'm a slow reader, so it takes me a while to get through books, but this one didn't take so long. Permission to Feel by Mark Brackett. Happy to share it, lend it out. One of the highlights of the book for me was this quote about education. A key job of a school is to give students new things to love, an exciting field of study, new friends. It reminded us that what teachers really teach is themselves, their contagious passion for their subjects and students. It reminded us that children learn from people they love, and they, that love in this context means willing the good of another and offering active care for the whole person. This is our, the middle school's, commitment to you, and we're going to share with you how we're going to get it done this year. It's not a problem. I would like to invite you to explore the following topics with me this evening. Teaching and learning in 2021 at Berman, not in the entire world. Technology, assessments, then my new work wife, Batsheva Atlas, will share about social and emotional learning and communication. So come on, we've got quite a ride ahead of us tonight. So what is different about Berman, two point, Berman at Home 2.1? 2. 2. Well, I, I increased us, us already. Berman at Home 2.0. The first thing is that we are moving to a block schedule. And I'm going to outline for you some of the big reasons why we switched to a block at this time. Let's start with the first bullet, transitions. Developmentally, fewer transitions will support our middle schoolers' development as they will have to maneuver between fewer classes, establish deeper relationships with teachers, and content because of the longer length of time. And they will be responsible for less stuff each day. Instead of keeping track of nine subjects each day, they will be focused on four each day and a special each day. 
Executive functioning, I got to be honest with you, is a skill that I continue to work on to this day, even in my old age. Minimizing transitions between Minimizing transitions, meeting with fewer teachers for longer periods of time supports the development of executive functioning skills. We wanted to extend the academic time students had during the day without increasing the transitions and, and the block schedule allows us to do that. Just as a reminder, a block period is 70 minutes long compared to the traditional model of a 40 minute block. Some schools do it for longer, some for a little shorter. This one we feel, as Goldilocks would say, is just right. And I'm pretty sure you said that with me. The block schedule also allows us to pivot from the virtual world back into our building. These transitions will support the CDC guidelines as we will have fewer times during the day when the whole middle school will be in the hallway at once. We have to prepare instituted a 15 minute break between classes, even now in Vermin at Home 2.0, um, so that will allow only one grade level at a time to be in the hallway when that time, if the, and when that time should come. Bullet point number two, instruction, my favorite topic. One thing I have been able to recognize in this COVID time is that it's okay to slow down, mostly because there really hasn't anywhere to go. But even still, slowing down a little has its benefits. In instruction, having more times means we can delve more deeply into the content. We have the time to introduce the content by determining students' prior knowledge and their entry points into instruction. We can give the extra examples, add the extra reading time. We can allow for guided practice and see how our students are internalizing the material within the context of one lesson. More pathways to learning can be introduced. Our teachers have been crazy busy learning new ways to bring the material to their students, whether it's a new app, a new program, or a new way to engage their students. With more time, teachers can develop pathways to meet the needs of their students and allow the time to practice and master the content using these strategies and tools. Synchronous and asynchronous learning. Teachers will provide opportunities in their classrooms to work as a whole group, in small group, and independently. We love our breakout rooms. The extra time of block schedules enables the teacher to group the students in different ways to increase their interaction with each other and the material. And finally, reflection. Before students leave the virtual classroom, there is a time for reflection. A simple exit ticket helps the teacher see where her students are in their learning, whether the goals she set for the learning were met, and feedback for the lesson as a whole. Bullet point number three, relationships, relationships, relationships. Between the student and teacher, with more time, each lesson can begin with a do now that enables the teacher to get to know their students. As students work, teachers can conference one-on-one, -on -one, love those breakout rooms, and small groups to see where they are in their understanding of the material. Collaboration, our students learn from our teacher, uh, teachers, of that there is no doubt. Students also learn from each other. With added time, teachers can create opportunities for students to tackle new material as a supportive and collaborative group. Whether it's using breakout rooms, Google Docs, or a myriad of other tools, our students will continue to benefit not only learning from their teachers, but also from and with each other. And finally, flow. This is the dream of every teacher, that during their class, every student finds the flow of the learning. They own the material, they are invested in the learning, and the concept of time quickly leaves the room. Most likely, students have had choice, they feel some autonomy, and they feel empowered in their learning and not just engaged in their learning, as one of my heroes, George Kuro, says on the slide. Engagement is more about what you can do for your students. Empowerment is about helping students to figure out what they can do for themselves. The following three slides are a sample, are sample um, schedules for each of our grade levels. So you can see on the left um, side, the white side, where it says sample sixth grade, this is the breakdown of the hours of the day. A 15 to nine is scheduled for davening. We, Mrs. Atlas will speak more about this, but we um, believe firmly that beginning our day with davening is obviously a hallmark of the Berman education. 9, 15 to 10, 20, 10, that should be 1025, sorry, 1040 to 1150, 1150 to 1255. What I'd like for you to notice is that there are two things in this center block. That is for half of the time will be for lunch and half of the time will be for specials um, in the virtual world as well. Science, Gamara, and the last section of the day in our virtual world is scheduled for resource. And Mrs. Atlas will speak more about that a little bit later. 
Here's a sample seventh grade where I made the times right. <laughs> 8.15 to 9, 9.15 to 10.25, 10.40 to 11.50. You can see that 1050. over the two, every, just so you know, on my Mondays and Wednesdays will always be A days, Tuesdays and Thursdays will always be B days, and we will flip switch off for Fridays. Um, the kids will definitely have a calendar that will be sent home with them both virtually and in hard copy when we set, when you come by for the drive by pickup on the 31st. And again, an eighth grade. Moving to a block schedule requires that even more attention be paid to setting learning targets and goals, knowing who your students are, creating meaningful learning opportunities, and setting unit goals and expectations. Our teachers were already achieving these goals in their planning way before COVID hit. But since it hit and we decided to move to a block schedule, their learning and dedication has multiplied. On this slide is a small sample of programs and theories our teachers have been exploring, and they represent both the general and the Judaic side of the curriculum. On the top, uh, top, you'll see where it says Better Lesson. This is um, a program that all of our teachers, both in the middle and upper school, have participated in. It's a wonderful organization with an incredible website and an incredible, uh, rich, incredibly rich uh, resource page that they have shared with us, with our teachers. Two below it, you're going to see the landing page for Loam Day. Loam Day is an online tool for our Kodesh teachers to use for children to experience asynchronous learning when it relates to skills in the Kodesh classroom. And in the middle, you'll also see where it says JI. This is Mr. Daniel Schwartz, who's participating on behalf of us in workshops on Jewish Interactive because Mr. Schwartz likes to create games of reflecting on the learning with his students, and Jewish Interactive is amazing at it. The other pieces are just a few examples of what our teachers have done, it would take an entire PowerPoint to fill them all. Using technology. As the slide says, technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of a great teacher can be transformational. Although our teachers have been learning new tools, they know fully well that what that the that the tech needs that the tech needs to support the learning. The learning targets, unit goals, and of course our students come before all the cool apps and gadgets. However, when they do introduce a tool, here are some reasons they might insert one into a lesson. They would like to engage, to empower, to provide choice, to communicate in a different way, to assess their, their students, to share the learning, to reflect on the learning, to teach in a new way, to learn, and my favorite, to have fun. Here is a sample lesson plan that is that will represent what our teachers are going to be working with. So you can see the same breakdown of, this is a breakdown of one lesson broken down into components. Teachers of course can design it the way they want to, but the goal of designing a block schedule is to provide multiple opportunities for the students to interact with the material. One thing, a couple things that we added to our template, you can notice at the top where it says, what is the teacher doing and what are the students doing? This is intentional because we know that the 70 minutes can either fly by or we or go a little bit more slowly than we would desire for the for the students so by listing out at each stage of the game what will the students be doing we can make sure that we're switching up the modalities as we're teaching the concepts so a do now is what you would do right at the beginning of class to set the tone um, we have been talking a lot about what do nows can look like in the in a block schedule or in a classroom in general I've been meeting with our teachers at least once a week to provide professional development and we've been having a great great time doing it. So I want to try something with you all right now, if you'll play with me a little bit. So this is one do now that I think is really fun. And you're going to do this and Van is going to pay attention. I mean, Sarah is going to pay attention to what you put into the chat. Only she can see it, do it, see it. So here's your challenge. If you could put anything on your license plate using one to seven numbers or letters, what would it be? So take, I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes. I'm not even going to set my timer, so it probably won't be a couple of minutes. But I want you to go ahead and post in the chat. And let's see if we can decipher each other's plates. Here's mine. I'm not going to read it. So you can either post your own or try to figure out what mine is. You can keep working on that, but you also have to pay attention. I'm sure you all can multitask. Your students sure can. Assessment. 
I am very, very proud. And I get choked up when I talk about the teachers I have the pleasure and honor of working with. And I'm pretty sure some of them are on here tonight. So if you see any, make sure that you give them a, a, a virtual high five because they deserve it. I am very proud that even though we had to pivot to online learning so suddenly, our teachers never stopped assessing our students not even for one day. Here are some examples of what I got to see as they continue to use assessments for, as, and of the learning. They use the Google Suite like experts. Unbelievable, breaking down that waffle, pulling it apart and putting it back together to get the students to interact with the material. They changed the way they assessed, moving from traditional summative assessments to ongoing formative assessments, getting little pieces of information about your children along the way so that nothing relied on just one big assessment. They involved student voice and choice in an assessment, which we know is a hallmark to a wonderful classroom experience. Here are some other great examples I got to see. If you didn't get to see samples of Dr. Stern's end of year slideshow, you don't know what you're missing. Just send me an email, I'll send it to you. Same thing with Mrs. Olson's Netflix shows and Mrs. Frank's All About Me projects. The work our teachers are doing is incredible. And now I'm going to pass the mic over to my wife, Mrs. Atlas. You're on, Mrs. Atlas. Let's try it again. <laughs> we are so happy to see everybody tonight and thank you for coming and spending the time with us this evening to hear about the middle school plan and everything that we're doing to give the kids a great start to a new school year. Whether we're virtual or when we go back to the building that we're on top of it and we're ready to roll. Let's talk about the social emotional pieces. Um, after tomorrow, you should be receiving an email from us, which will have a number of uh, links and attachments. And I'm going to talk about some of them now. One of them is going to be a parent survey. Um, this over the summer, Prisma presented um, many different awesome workshops for both teachers, administrators, and mental health professionals. And one of the um, parts that they presented was a parent survey for you to give us feedback about where your middle schooler is emotionally, behaviorally, which will allow us to pivot and be flexible because it's going to be a big transition for them. One of the experts that presented at Prisma um, discussed that it could take up to three months for an adolescent sleep schedule to shift back to normal. And we're aware of that, and so are the teachers. So you will be seeing that survey. Please send it in because it will give us a sense of where your child is and what we need to do to best support them in the new school year. We are also going to be discussing with teachers and with parents in general, reacclimating to a school schedule. Due to this, we're going to have a no homework policy until Rosh Hashanah with the exclusion of nightly math homework. And the reason that we're doing this is we want them to get in the habit of doing homework every night, but not of it being a big stress. They'll do some math homework, they should play outside, and most importantly, eat supper at a normal time and go to sleep. So that in the morning, their body clock starts readjusting and they're ready and awake at 8.15, ready to go. One of the things that we need to consider, which is the same as every year and yet at a heightened level, is Maslow's hierarchy. That until the kids are feeling physically okay, emotionally safe and stable, and feeling like they can handle what we're asking them to do, it is very difficult for them to learn new things and to grow. Our goal is to continue to be teaching and for them to be growing and learning new skills. That's what they're here. That's what they're coming to school to do. But we are going to make sure that our first priorities are the bottom of that pyramid. And we need to make sure that they're ready to learn before we start teaching. And finally, community. We, are, we have a teacher committee that met this morning to talk about how to help the kids feel more connected, how to do group activities. We have a wide range of families in the sense that some families have to be much more careful about COVID than others. And many families have decided to do different things. And that is what a family is all about, making your own parenting decisions. 
So one of the things that we are gonna be focusing on is making sure that all the kids are included in activities that are community building, class building, and you will be hearing more information about them in the next, in the next week or so. Okay, school home partnership, my favorite topic. One of the things, we, we got a lot of feedback from the spring and we took it seriously. One of the major concerns in the spring was Google Classroom. Many of, the, many of you and some of the kids even were having a hard time navigating, seeing what was due when, staying on top of the different assignments and navigating the calendar. One of the pieces that we've worked on this summer with both teachers and students was troubleshooting. And we are going to have a more uniform system for how teachers are posting assignments as well as posting on the calendar. And that's gonna to go together with a bullet point farther down, which has to do with student Google Classroom training, which we're going to be doing with the sixth graders more than once, seventh and eighth graders a refresher and an understanding of the way we're doing it to make it more uniform between classes. Orientation, um, okay, check supply list for, uh, supplies and virtual for virtual classes. Please double check the list because when we found out that we were gonna have to be virtual, we added a couple of things on. It's probably all things you have at home because they've already done the virtual schooling in the spring, but just we're asking as a favor for you to double check that. We are going to have two types of orientation. One type of orientation is going to be online for the kids. We're gonna be having videos with um, Edpuzzle so that we can make sure that they're watching the videos and understanding what the new, what the, what's new, what's old, and make sure that they're clear about what they need to do. And then we're going to be also working on what will hopefully be an outdoor um, orientation, which is going to be about team building, being outside, social, and safe. And that will be after school starts. Tfila. Tfila is an integral part of any modern Orthodox day school. And our Tfila teachers are inspired and excited to see the kids and excited to get to daven with them. And we want to impress upon everybody, kids, parents, families, that Tfila is important. And I think that this year it has an additional reason of being important. In addition to the obvious, coming to Tfila on time at 8.15 will help the kids get back into a normal schedule. So we are asking, you can certainly reach out to us if you have an extenuating circumstance, but we are asking that students come to Tefillah, we're gonna be taking attendance and really encouraging the kids with prizes and other things to make it a positive experience, but to make it an experience that we're expecting them to be part of every day. We talked about student Google Classroom training, and I'd like to thank some of the students who um, helped me troubleshoot. There are kids who went on our sample Google Classrooms to help tell me what was clear and what still needed help. Um, our Judaic teachers are discussing and planning a Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur survival guide that we will have for the kids. It's definitely gonna be a different, a different season of Yom and Tovim, and it's gonna be more important than ever that the kids feel that there's a, special, there's a special reason for the day and that they feel that it's a, it's a connection to Hashem and something that they want to participate in and something that they see as a growing relationship. We are working with our new coach, Coach Yona Singer, who joined us this summer on grade level activities. Um, one of our first one of our first activities we are hoping is going to be basketball clinics so that all the kids, um, players at all levels can come and practice and have time together doing exercise outside. And we are hoping that once that starts, we will have mincha before the clinic begins outside. And last but not least, we will be sending home an expectation agreement because we learned many things in the spring about what does and doesn't work in the virtual platform. And we ask that you read it with your student, you discuss it. And as I met with a parent this week and it was great. It just led to a discussion of what they want, what the child wanted his background to be and how they were gonna work together to set it up so that as an example, his camera would be on and he would be comfortable and the teacher would be able to see what he was up to and that he was learning optimally. 
So please um, look out for that. Okay, Educational Support Services is ESS. Um, the day before school starts, that's August 31st, we will have a back to school supply pickup celebration where we are going to be packaging up books and fun things for you to pick up uh, for your middle schooler so that they have everything they need to get started. These are gonna be the same supplies that they bring back with them to the building when we're back in person. And we're planning just some fun surprises to make it an exciting celebration. It's not like last year, the first day of school, but we're gonna try to make it fun. I wanted to clarify for parents, the resource versus study hall. We are, we're focusing on the virtual right now, which means that we are not going to have study hall from 3.30 to 4.30. That will be something that we address when we're back in person and students who stay till 4.30 to go home with high school siblings. Resource, however, is going to take place virtually. And if you don't know about it, don't worry about it. Um, but for, for, for students who are in resource, whose parents are concerned, there will be resource from 3.30 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday, and your case manager will be reaching out to you. Resource is really focused on students with unique learning needs and includes case management and a couple of other pieces to make sure, like you see in the picture, that everybody gets over the fence and that everybody's getting the support they need to succeed. Guidance, um, we are lucky to have Eliana Swore as our guidance counselor. We are, going, we are having weekly advisory meetings where each grade level is going to meet with an advisor, usually in smaller groups. And we are basing the lessons on the second step curriculum, which has been excellent, excellent until this point. And they have really shifted and adapted the lessons for the new situation and new challenges that our kids are facing. So we will be definitely introducing that to the kids and getting right into it. Communication, like Melanie said, is the most important thing. And we encourage both parents and kids to reach out to us. Something just as far as the division of communication, um, Melanie is going to be focusing on the teachers and questions, comments about the classes, please direct her way. Um, my main, the main address for me is issues with the kids, sometimes between students and teachers. And uh, Mrs. Soror is the point person for social emotional, some of the friendship things that go on in normal middle school times and probably virtually as well. So honestly, all three of us are available. We're here, we're ready. We love the kids and, and the most disappointing piece for me the last few weeks was knowing that we're gonna have to wait a little longer to see them in the building. But we are here and please don't hesitate to reach out with questions, comments, concerns. We're here and we want the kids to succeed. Finally, just to wrap us up, we wanna give a big thank you to you for your trust, for your partnership, for your support, for sharing your treasures. Although after being stuck inside with my treasures for as long as I have been, I'm not always sure they're my treasures, but somebody else always reminds me that they are. So thank you for sharing your treasures with us every day. And of course, I, I cannot say this enough to the teachers at the Berman Hebrew Academy, no matter the division, who go above and beyond every single day, all summer long, to make sure that we are planning the most amazing at home 2.0 that we can provide to you. So we thank you so much for taking some time this evening. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I hope that's okay, I can't see anybody, so I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. And I can see all of you. So Sarah, uh, Vanna, did we have any questions this evening? We do have a few questions. Um, thank you both so much. It was, it was really um, a very thorough and helpful presentation. Um, I, I was hoping that you could touch a little bit on sixth grade and what their um, entry into the middle school and their orientation looks like um, since they're the newbies. Yeah, we're really excited to have the sixth grade coming. Um, I spent time with the lower school team and then more time with Mora Viva getting to hear about all the kids and feeling like she knows them like the back of her hand. Um, we are going to have a couple of things for the sixth graders to help them acclimate. 
um, in addition to the general Google Classroom type of training that we're going to be doing, each classroom teacher is also going to be practicing and reviewing with them. The fact that we're waiting on homework except for math for the first week and a half or so is going to allow the teachers to know first that the, the sixth graders know how to use Google Classroom before they're expected to navigate it on its own. Um, our guidance counselor, Eliana Sroar, sets up meetings and we'll be doing virtual meetings with our sixth graders. Individual meetings just to touch base with them, ask them about themselves, about their families, and you know, what they're looking forward to and what they're concerned about. And I would say the same is for new to Berman students, that if you're in seventh or eighth grade and you're new, we're so happy to have you. And we've, um, and, and some, some of those new to Berman students have actually been participating in the Berman Bakayats. So we've gotten to see them a little bit and are already so excited. Um, but it's, it's been a chance for them to get to know some of, some of the already Berman students. Um, we also have buddies for those kids. We also met, um, there are a bunch of teachers who um, had met the, this after, or this morning to talk about orientation for our students, um, especially our sixth graders who will be coming up. And we've got some exciting plans um, scheduled for them. So stay tuned. We don't, can't give all our secrets away tonight. So you got to give us something to hold on. Tell the kids, we know that they're not going to come all the way to school just to pick up a math book. Right. As important not. as that is. I'm thinking, be fun I'm thinking um, the uh, dunk tank, but don't tell them and don't tell Dr. Kassan that I ordered it today. So just looking for volunteers. So if you did this during the presentation, don't be shocked when I put you in the dunk tank. Um, so I won't tell you who's asking what questions, so it won't. <laughs> You won't judge anybody. Um, there's a couple of questions about the schedule um, and when the student schedules will be released. Okay. Um, we, we will be ready. My, the week before school, we will be sending out schedules. Um, they, they may be ready earlier, but I, I just want to make sure that we have it right and that we have them thoroughly checked. But they will be ready the week before school starts. And because we will start out virtually, the kids are going to be in a mix with everybody in their grade. So they don't need to worry. You can reassure them. They don't have to worry about being put in a specific pot. They'll have just what they usually have, particularly for the seventh and eighth graders who know, our, who know how we mix the kids constantly. Um, they'll be with basically everybody. Great. Thank you. Um, you talked a lot about the professional development that's been happening over the summer, um, but there's a question about what types of support the teachers will be receiving once school is up and running. Um, will the administrators be checking in to offer support in the classrooms? Um, and how will that all work? That's a really great question. Who asked that question? Just kidding. Um, so, um, <laughs> Um, with part of what the joy of my job is working with the teachers. And I think this being, I've been around for a whole year now. So now in year two, the teachers have a little bit more trust in me right now um, than they might have when I first started lurking in their classrooms. But that's where I am lurking. And so we, uh, I, uh, my job and my joy is to support teachers, um, no matter if it's their first year or your 150th year, you can, um, you can always learn something new. So we are going to have meetings once a week as, um, as um, grade level teams. I'm already planning those. Um, in the past, we've had professional learning communities, and we're switching it up a little bit this year to do it by, um, by department. And what I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do, so this is going to be new for the teacher. So if they're looking like this, um, you'll know why. But um, what we want them to do is tackle a problem of practice, meaning we're tackling the block schedule, we're tackling the virtual learning, we're tackling teaching in a COVID world. What is a problem of practice that as a team we can um, we can connect to and we can walk through and we can plan lessons around it and compare notes at the end. So um, I schedule meetings with teachers and I pop into classrooms and I go into the go into classrooms on a regular basis. Um, I do it not to catch teachers doing something that's not great, but I catch it to celebrate what the teachers are doing every single day and there's always something to celebrate. And, and we've also set it up, set up the schedule so that teachers will need an extra hand, particularly virtually. And um, there are a number of us that are available at different times of the day where we're just, we're just there, we're there to help. 
we're there to support, and the kids feel that too. I think that um, the, the kids appreciate when there's somebody else um, to answer some of the questions or to deal with the breakout rooms. So, right. And if there is always more available, right? So if a teacher is struggling with one, with one piece of their practice and another teacher is struggling with another piece of their practice. There are so many resources out there for teachers today and each other to kind of gab. We don't have the same teacher's lounge experience that we typically have, but the conversations that we've been having about teaching and learning are just as rich as they've been in the past. So that's a really great question. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry if you already touched on this with the assessments, but are there going to be assessments at the beginning of the year when students re-enter um, to kind of gauge, gauge where they left off from last year and, and placements for this year? Really great question. So the placements, you know, we try to think, look at things as being fluid, right? Um, the teachers, um, as I said in the presentation, assess their students the entire time that we began this process in the spring. And so I, 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 I don't question the placements that are made, um, but we will continue to what we say pre-assess the students. So we really want to know what is their retention from last year? What prior knowledge are they coming with? What interests are they coming with? Where are they in their, in the continuum of, continuum of understanding to make sure that we're hitting the right targets with them in our instruction. So assessments are ongoing, but it doesn't mean that it's a test that they're going to sit in front of their computer for for 45 minutes. Our teachers are experts at the grade levels that they teach and the subject matters that they teach, and they know exactly how to find out where their students are in their understanding, and they do it constantly. And, and there's also just a flexibility, meaning that this is a time of tremendous growth for the kids. And somebody who could barely do long division in sixth grade may be ready to move up. Um, and nobody, nobody should feel boxed in. We have, you know, we have, we, we, we have expectations of what needs to be done. And we really try to do everything possible to help the kids reach their potential. But that the, the levels for IVRIT and math are fluid. Right. And one thing that I neglected to say was that our middle school teachers do not give assessments to catch our students failing. They give assessments to catch our kids being successful and celebrating their learning. So as they continue to assess their, their, their students, this is what they're doing. Great. Thank you. Um, I want to touch on block schedules just a little bit more. Um, you talked about the template and how it's a 70 minute block and um, all the things that could be happening during that time. Can you explain a bit about how um, the instruction is going to look differently um, in person and virtually in this block schedule landscape? So the part of the reason we, and I, I hope I understand your question, so please ask again if I if I don't get it this first time. Um, the, the, we chose going to a block schedule for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, we feel that this is the best schedule for students in the middle and high school for all the reasons that I listed. And I can start over again if you want me to because I got it right here, or I'm happy to share my notes with you. But really in terms of transitions, in terms of their development, both emotionally um, and academically, having few Fewer, um, fewer transitions in their day, fewer, less stuff that they need to be carrying um, is something that we were aiming for way before COVID. These were conversations that I had with um, Dr. Kassan and with Mrs. Um, Popper when we first started working together as a pipe dream for moving in this direction. So um, it's incredible that in this time of COVID, every morning I wake up and look for this silver, first I check to make sure I don't have a sore throat, and then I look for the silver linings on a day-to-day -day basis. And part of the silver linings that I'm discovering um, now is that our teachers are in incredible and they are looking at these 70 minutes as an opportunity and not as like a, a, a something too out of the realm of what they can do. We also chose it because it will be easy to pivot so it won't change once we come back onto campus, God willing. Um, there will be different, obviously the students might not always be on Zoom like they are now but that's still a very real possibility. I also want to mention that all of the technology that we're building into the building that Shmaria Gassner who's new to us and has been an unbelievable addition to our team and is totally setting up each classroom to be like a dream classroom in a nightmare world um, is, is helping us to make sure that the learning continues at a steady pace regardless of where it's happening. Was that, did that answer? Um, there's a, a clarification about not just the why, but the what will the 70 minutes look like? I think that you talked a bit about the different 
modes of learning that will happen, that it's not just going to be lecture. The Correct. Whole time, but. Correct. Oy. What, it, God forbid, it will not be 70 minutes of lecture. I could lecture for 70 minutes, but I don't know that anybody would really want to listen to it. So what we're encouraging our teachers to do, and really um, Rabbi Aaron Lovett has been in instrumental in sharing this incredible knowledge with us too, is to be able to plan smaller chunks, right? So it's like, I don't know, there's all those diets out there and some of them are like, eat a little bit, you know, throughout the day to, to watch your weight instead of having these big meals. So this is, think about it the same way. We're gonna get little chunks of learning divided up into different time spans that the kids might not even be aware that we're switching so frequently, but the teachers are aware of setting up 10 minutes at the beginning, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, um, and breaking it down. And, and as they transition from, or I shouldn't use the word transition, as they move from piece to piece of their lesson, they will introduce new modalities. And the new modality might be, I want you to just turn away from your computer for, computer for a minute, and especially for us in the English department, you're gonna write for 10 minutes, we're gonna write our stories. So we will be trying to get the kids to interact with the material in different ways throughout those 70 minutes. Great, thank you. Um, to stay on the block a little bit, can you talk about, since classes are going to be on an everyday schedule, can you talk about the continuity of learning or continued practice um, on days that um, classes are not meeting? For example, with math, how are the students going to continue their practice? Um, great. So the, the longer class period will mean that teachers get to delve a little bit more deeply. Um, as Batsheva said, they will be math homework along. We always suggest, though, whenever you work in a block in that you, um, you do the homework for that for that class on that day. So if you have math on an A day, you do your math homework on the A day and not save it for the B day. So math conversations in a math classroom might not be happening every single day, but I guarantee you the concept of patterning, the concept of thinking critically, the concept of working of working through problems is something that happens every single day. And I think another piece of that is really student choice, where on an A day, and let's say you get math homework, we're gonna be showing the kids, you could break it up this way and do it all tonight, yay for you. Or you could say, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the evens tonight and the odds tomorrow night. But it gives them a little bit of choice, which I think is something that we're always looking for. Um, helping them manage their time, but giving, giving them little options where it really is gonna be up to them to decide the when. Great. Um, I think that I got all of the questions. If not, I can be the first in the dunk tank. Um, oh, one thing that just popped in. So sorry, there is a fly in my house. So annoying. Um, there's for the uh, incoming sixth graders or new students health class um, last year because we were virtual. Um, there were some talks that that didn't, didn't happen, happen that are necessary for these um, adolescents. So um, is there a plan to to have those yeah. classes in this in the beginning of yeah, the that's year? an excellent that's an excellent question. I think as time goes on, we're going to have a growing list of things that we say, oh, we got to make sure we double up on that. Um, we have a very busy um, nurse Kotek who will always make time for us. Um, and that's something we will be scheduling very soon in. I think that even though virtual is not optimal for these conversations, there will, there will be a basic conversation and then follow up with the kids at the beginning of the year. Because yeah, there are gonna be just age appropriate conversations that we can have virtually and then follow up in person. Thank you. That's a great question. The person says that he knows that it's a great question. So it is. It is. He could be <laughs> he or she. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Same on the same venue or the vein. Um, fifth grade didn't get to do their Hebrew play last year. Um, if there's anything that anything special, I guess, for these um, incoming sixth graders to help them um, 
Yeah. Oh, um, Mrs. Yeah. Antine is actually going to be teaching a special around plays and and she's doing one on creative writing and one on plays and I have her specifically working with those sixth graders and she's already developed relationships with them in the fifth grade. She's sitting where I can see her so she can wave. Um, so we're excited to have her. I was speaking with her the other day and she's got some incredible things planned for our kids both in beginning in the virtual world. So it is disappointing when you don't get to have those special experiences and we will do our very best to recreate those that they haven't had and hopefully God willing be able to give them even more than they bargained for over the course of the year. And we have seventh and eighth graders who also missed um, big fun things that they look forward to. Mrs. Oppenheim has a surprise for her sixth graders. Now they're going to be seventh graders when they pick up their boxes but our teachers are thinking about the seventh and eighth graders as well and thinking about what, what, what we can do, because we can't replace what they missed, but we can be thinking about alternatives to make it interesting and fun. I'm hearing a lot about Williamsburg, so I'll <laughs> just <laughs> leave it there. I haven't made it to that stage yet, so I'll get there. Um, one other question about specials. Um, are specials going to be, are there choices for specials? Or are they designated um, every day for each student? It's going to be a different system than it has been in the past. Um, it is going to be designated. It is not going to be um, by choice. One of the things that we learned was that 6th, 7th, and 8th graders have different choices every week. So when they would choose their choice at the beginning of the semester, two weeks in, they had a different choice, and two weeks after that, they had another choice. So what we are doing is we're giving each of the kids a chance to try a bunch of different specials. And that's going to shift every trimester. We have three trimesters, but they are going to be assigned specific um, specials and they're going to be assigned with a group of kids. So they will travel together. It will be their specials group at that. But I want to just say a but over there is that for the time that we're virtual, if you're a family that needs the time to go take a walk or they need to watch somebody little so you could do a work phone call, let us know and we'll be flexible with that lunch specials time if they're not gonna be available until we're uh, back in person. But Mr. Hines has art boxes ready and we, ha we have a lot of cool things to send home. Um, but just to have in mind that we'll be flexible about that lunch specials time. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention one thing. Tomorrow morning, we'll be sending a follow-up communication that includes this recording and, and other information, the school supplies list, um, everything that you could need. Um, and I think that those are all of the questions. There's one just popped in about how um, resource is going to work virtually. Yes. So um, the way resource is going to work is going to be different virtually than it will be when we get back in person. But we're focusing on the near future right now. And most of, res most of the resource students are taking resource from 3.30 to 4.30. The academic day ends at 3.30. And it will likely be in two shifts, which means that the resource teacher will be working with three students at a time because we felt that that was as much as they could really get involved with each of the three virtually. Um, and the other piece is, especially for seventh and eighth grade parents whose children took race resource, know that the resource teachers were very available. So because it's virtual, the kids will be encouraged, invited, all of the above to reach out to their resource teacher if they need more time. Um, one thing that I didn't mention that I should, which is different than lower school, is that lower school parents are encouraged to email teachers directly when there's an issue. And in upper school, students are directed to email teachers, you know, directly. Middle school, we're the bridge. We're asking students to reach out to teachers, to administrators, and to CC their parents. Because we know that you have to be, still have to be very involved. And we want to encourage independence and helping them learn how to write an email and communicate with adults is a key part to our mission for middle school. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> are there clubs in addition to specials? Um, so we haven't planned for those as of yet. Um, we want to get the school year started off um, with a bang and um, on a joyful note. 
Um, and usually what happens with clubs in middle school is a lot of the time, and in my one year, I can tell you this, so much of a quality <laughs> to uh, chime in, but this, the clubs that we ran last year were actually student run and started by students' interest. Um, so one club we ended up having was the Rubik's Cube Club, which was one of my favorite clubs last year, because I don't know if you knew this, but kids became addicted to Rubik's Cubes again. So instead of having me tell the kids to stop playing with the Rubik's Cube all the time because of the click, 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 click. So instead we said, why don't we channel that? into a contest and we had a speed contest for the Rubik's Cube. There was a hockey club, I think. There was a book club. There were different clubs that the kids, we developed based on kids' interest. So certainly if there is interest for it, we can make it happen. And, and I think we're going to have to work within the parameters of safety. Um, we, we have the ideas and we have the, you know, we know what needs to be done to get club started, but we need to make sure first that we can do it in, in a safe way. Correct. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to let you. Rabbi Dr. Kastan um, say a couple of words um, before we close for the evening. I just wanted to say thank you again. Um, I'm so excited that you guys get to hear from Melanie and Bacheva and the middle school team in terms of everything that they have in store. Um, I know that, um, you know that, that we are all eager about all the opportunities, not just the academics, but all the social emotional and in the plays and everything. Obviously, I'm, I'm just so proud of the team because as you can see, there's a virtual plan and hopefully uh, it, it, when, when we can go back in person, there's an in-person plan. And as they, uh, as they mentioned earlier, at that point, we will have another one of these to tell you exactly what all the uh, special events and everything will look like once we can also be back in person with our students. Uh, so thank you for patience and compassion and uh, in your support. And we really look forward to starting the school year with your students. Good night, everybody. Bye.